How's it going there, everybody? It's Mr. Zen over here bringing you guys a brand new segment for today. And for today's segment, guys, we're going to be talking about is the first episode of Samurai Jack from Season 5, folks. And I finally got to actually watch it, but that, you know, part of me on being a little late, but that's due to the fact that, you know, I had to watch all the other seasons in order for me to actually see if Samurai Jack actually goes back and recalls any of its pre predecessor stories. So that's why I kind of took my time with Samurai Jack too as well because I'm loving the way that it always tells its narrative and the way it's, it's a unique way of storytelling as well because sometimes there, there's no dialogue involved so you really have to sit down and watch the show in order to get the message that it's trying to portray. But nonetheless though guys, Samurai Jack is still coming out strong in season five folks we begin the episode by actually seeing samurai jack he's like in a in a very technical he's, he's more technological savvy in this episode we can kind of see because he comes in in like this hellish bike he has his protruding spikes he's got guns he's got like electronic spears and he's got like this ironclad armor with an oni mask over himself and it seems that he's not wearing his traditional you know Japanese clothing it seems more like he seems more like he's a he's a war general it seems that more he's he seems more like a you could say like he's been through hell itself because throughout the episode when you guys are looking at in this episode it seems more the fact that the way that the story are trying to portray is that Jack really has lost his mind he has no weapons or by the weapons I mean he does not have his magical sword because in the beginning of the episode we see that he's fighting the actual beetles the you could say the, yeah, the beetles that he found in the beginning episodes of season one and it's interesting at the fact that you see Jack actually struggling facing off against these these bugs but you're here wondering like what happened to Jack throughout the whole entire time because Jack says in his own narrative it's been 50 years of it of him facing Aku and it seems that to me it seems that he's tired he's tired of doing this and it, it to me in my honest opinion it makes sense because at the end of the day Jack is human just with a supernatural sword but he himself is human and I'm and you're looking at this episode that's very entertaining that you're looking at that that Jack has come a long way you know but it just seems that he's slowly derivating away from the original path that he was because throughout the episode I am not joking guys it had a lot of dark themes it was emphasized the fact that he was having hallucinations that his mom and dad were were calling out to him and telling him Jack go back go back to what you were doing stop running away and you hear and us viewers are looking at this as like wondering like what what is going on here Jack like why are you losing your mind and they're even emphasizing the fact on the episode as well that that it's all it's all in his mind it's not necessarily Aku's doing people would have thought like oh Aku is using his magical abilities in order to do this but no it was it's all in Jack's own set of mind that he feels guilty that some that something must have happened back then in order for Jack to actually be progressing in this certain manner and I'm the, the way that I'm kind of looking at this as well guys don't get me wrong is the fact that Jack he's a strong war a good Kendrick spirit but sometimes there's something along the way that always you know you could say tries to just sway his heart so it's interesting to see that it wasn't Aku's doing but Jack's own self so it's might it might seem that season five might be heading along towards the way of Jack himself finding himself again. I'm hoping that they're going to go towards that route because that would actually make the, the whole season interesting instead of individual episodes itself. I'm hoping they don't go towards that route. But needless to say, guys, Aku wasn't really necessarily involved in this episode. Yes, there was a small, you could say, cameo voice. But other than that, Aku did not eat, was not even shown throughout this whole episode, which was a lot of us viewers were kind of wondering as to well you know we want to see what aku has been doing as well but needless to say though we did get something different and that was from remember guys from the promo of samurai jack was the daughters of aku we're all wondering as to what exactly is that now the daughters of aku hmm, the daughters of aku 
that was an interesting scene to see, folks. Needless to say, oh my god, when you guys watch that scene, we see a mother giving birth to seven children, or was it seven women giving each an individual baby? I wasn't too sure. That's a specific scene. What little caught me off guard because I, I wasn't expecting that out of Samurai Jack to go towards that route. And it's funny because they're like, like they worship Aku. They're worshiping Aku to the point that it's almost like, like Satanism or like a like a cult worship to the point that they they're act the way that they were pronouncing themselves like oh you know we we are the daughters of Aku and you know we are so right rightful is giving ourselves just to only him that they want to they want to see him once again but you're here wondering like did Aku really come in and talk to these this cult itself because they even had like a statue of Aku in the middle of the room and you're here wondering like what the what is going on here just what what do these daughters of Aku have in common with Aku himself what caused them to actually be a part of this cult the more mystery that it surrounds us and, in, and on top of that with Jack's side mission that was shown throughout the episode was entertaining to say the least and needless to say guys with the daughters of Aku they were showing that these daughters of Aku since birth they were trained till their adulthood to actually kill Samurai Jack and it's and it's entertaining to say the least that most of Jack's enemies have always been males, and never really a female. And if it is a female, it's always it's always a fight with like a supernatural force, not necessarily woman assassins. Yes, there was an episode back in the day where it was like I believe it was a princess that tried to fight to try to fight Jack, but she kind of gave up because she saw that Jack defeated all the all the males around her, and she was just overwhelmed by his powerful presence. But this time we see that they're. they're these women are, are influenced by Aku and fear. So at least to say, we never seen a, a woman actually go full head on against Jack. And also Jack doesn't have his sword, so ooh, just makes it more interesting. So he has to rely on his techniques and past cultures that he's learned in order to defend himself, which I think that's gonna be interesting. But they didn't show that. All they showed was so far that the daughters of Aku were just training and they're heading towards to fight him. Said, can't wait for that. Now, the last topic that I do want to talk about is the Pipe Piper that was that was involved with the fight with Samurai Jack. That was entertaining because we, most of the time we always see different types of bounty hunters always facing Jack. But what got me a little entertained was that this, this robot had the number of Aku. So I was like wondering, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought they were actually going to show Aku in that certain scene, but no, they did it. But the Pied Piper was actually interesting because I love the way he was actually just doing his musical notes throughout. It seemed more like he was comical. He had a flamboyant personality. But the way that Samurai Jack was facing him, it looked like he's he's also struggling. It's showing that Samurai Jack is is deaf. He might die. That's, that's what I feel like the, the presence of this whole entire episode is that death is actually closer to Jack and they even the even the storytelling itself and the narrative was explaining when when Jack with his hallucinations as he sees a, a, a person on a horse coming closer to him as if to say like to embody that it's death itself maybe because he's, he's running away from his original goals that that if he runs away and he doesn't follow the prophecy then maybe he will die but we don't know that for sure but needless to say or because maybe he's immortal that that he can't die, that, that he sees and hallucinates this, that in order to, to get him crazy, you could say, in a sense. It's kind of entertaining, like I said, the way that the storytelling is kind of going, it, it's literally based on interpretations of other people, because so far they're only giving us bits and bits of information so far in the episode. We don't know that for sure, too sure, as to what that pale horse is also accompanying with Samurai Jack, or if it had something to do with Samurai Jack actually losing his sword as well. Like I said, there's so many questions that are arising, but let's say that's it for today, folks. Let me know down in the comments below as to what you guys' thoughts on the episode itself. Do you guys think Samurai Jack fought Aku and actually lost this time? But in lost, I mean he lost his sword with Aku. Or do you guys think that something else happened along the way that he just he gave up? Like I said, it's entertaining. I'm loving the way that Samurai Jack is going. And I can't wait to see more of Samurai Jack. But like I said, guys, let me know down in the comments. And as always, guys, if you guys enjoy my content, don't forget to give a like, comment, share, and subscribe for more Samurai Jack episode discussions. And as always, have a nice day, folks.
Thank you.